Good morning, Westside. Thank you for joining us for Sunday morning worship. Reverend Rosalind Spencer and the Pebbles to Living Stones Ministry hosted the Purity Dinner virtual ceremony on August 9th. At the end of today's service, please stay tuned and witness some of our children make their commitment to purity. There will also be some important church announcements to follow. Father, we ask that you would break yokes and destroy feathers. Father, we ask that you would send water into your fallow ground. Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for the West Side Church that continues to stand week after week and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. For we will declare that you are good and your mercy endures forever. We don't have everything we want, but you are good and your mercy endures forever. We've been sick in our bodies, but you are good and your mercy endures forever. Because we believe that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And that when the enemy, sickness, poverty, lack, all those things rush up against us, that you will raise the standard. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning. Come on, right where you are. I don't hear your praise team. Let me hear your praise team. Let me hear your praise team. Let's give God praise today. How many know that the Lord is your strength? I said, how many know that the Lord is your strength? Right where you are, you ought to just lift your hands and say, Lord, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Come on, praise team, just lift your hands. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reaches to me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. Sing that, you are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches, reaches me. One more time, you are my strength, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Oh, wow. 
You are my peace. You are my peace. You are my peace. Say, you're my peace like no other. You're my peace like no other. And it reaches to me. It reaches to me. You are my peace. You are my peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like no other. Peace like no other. And it reaches to me. You are my joy, my joy. Said you are my joy, joy, joy. My joy like no other. Oh, 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 yeah. Joy like no other. And it reaches to me. You are my joy, my joy. Said you are my joy, my, my, my joy. Joy like no other. Joy like no other. And it reaches to me. You are my strength. When I'm weak, Lord, my spirit like no other. You're a strength like no other. And it reaches to me. And it reaches to me. Oh, and it reaches to me. When I'm down and when I'm out, it reaches to me. When I'm lonely, when I'm lonely, it reaches to me. Said it reaches, said it reaches to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It reaches to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It reaches to me. Said thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It reaches to me. Said praise you. Praise you, it reaches to me. Said a wonderful Savior, it reaches to me. Whoa, it reaches, it reaches to me. Said it reaches, it reaches to me. It reaches, it reaches, it reaches to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It reaches. To me. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 The scripture says, when I am weak, that's when he is strong. I thank God that he's my leaning post. I thank God that he's my leaning post. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I know you feel it. I know you feel it. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. Because the Lord daily loads us with benefits. Hallelujah. 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 I'm glad that in this desert, I can still feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your voice, all ye people, and praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, 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 he's worthy. 
Yes, he's worthy. Worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. Don't let the devil tell you that the Lord is not worthy. Don't let the devil tell you he's not worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy of praise. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God yes. Things will get better when you tell God yes. Uh, things will get better. I dare you to put a yes Lord on your mouth. I dare you to say a yes Lord to him. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Yes Lord, yes Lord. I tell you, it's not a cliche with me when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Do not fear. Do not fear. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Do not fear. Do not fear. We want to remind you that we are still praying on Monday nights with SHOP at 7 o'clock p.m. You can visit our website for the call-in number praying on Monday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. and on Wednesday mornings at 7 p.m. We have cards of thanks from the Pendale family and the Barley and Pritchett families, thanking Westside for their thoughtfulness. We're also meeting with our on Zoom. We have our Sunday school, our Epic, our women, our men, our youth, our choir, all meeting on Zoom. If you have any questions about it, you can call us here at the church. 972-221-5668. North Food, Texas Food Bank on yesterday, we served families in need. We thank God for Uncle Lou and the North Texas Food Bank and their diligence to making sure that we provide for the underserved of our community. On last Sunday, we'd like to thank Minister Rosalind Spencer and the Children's Ministry for the Purity Dinner. And at the end of this service, you are going to see a clip. So we ask that you would stay around and watch that clip. It was an awesome celebration. And today, 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 everybody say today. We are celebrating the birthday of our senior pastor, Dr. Delvin Atchison. Come on, can we give it up for him? Can we give it up for him? What an awesome gift. What an awesome gift. What an awesome gift he is to the body of Christ. But more importantly, we praise God because he has gifted him to the West Side Church as our shepherd and as our pastor. And although his birthday is on the 19th, we are celebrating today and now celebrating and leading the celebration for West Side is Sister Deborah Sidberry. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm excited to be here this morning. It's our pastor's birthday. Hallelujah. Now, right there in your homes, throw him kisses at the TV. Give him hugs. He can feel it. So I want you to do all of that for our pastor. What a shepherd that we have that lead our flock. And I'm so proud to call him my pastor. And I don't say that lightly. I am so proud to call him my pastor. So at this time, I am going to invite my pastor to come up so we can all celebrate Happy birthday, Pastor Atchison. Happy birthday. Woo! Yes. Yes. He feel your love. He feel it right now through the TV. He feel
feel all those hugs and those kisses that you sent it to him. Look at him. Look how he's smiling. He, he's so sad because he can't give y'all hugs. But give him a hug right now, Pastor. Hug them all. Oh, yeah. That's right. So at this time, I want to thank our pastor for being such a great leader. Happy birthday to you from my bottom of our hearts. And I know West Side is right there, the Holy Spirit. I feel their presence right now in this building. We want to say happy birthday, but we honored your wish. First of all, before I do that, I want to give you this from the West Side family. Now, this don't go to nothing but to you and Sister Hatchison. So that is for you to do what you want to do with. But you know our pastor asked for a special request. That special request was that anything that we gave to him for his birthday, he wanted to donate it to Imagine More. And that's how important Imagine More is to him. And I asked you two Sundays to go, West Side family, to come big, and you did it. And I am so proud of our family. So today I present to our pastor $4,700 that was given to him for his birthday by the West Side family. I present this check to you so that you can present it to the Imagine More how you wanted it to be. So at this time, I'm going to ask our cheer person of Imagine More, Yetta Tolliver, and our co-chair, Stan Walker, and I'm going to gonna get out of the way so Pastor can do what he asked to do. So let me ask y'all to walk over here. We're gonna, we're gonna get over here. We're gonna stay socially distanced. Now, I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of all of you who gave. Thank you so much for your gift. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, my wife is here, so I'm gonna beg her for some money. I'm, thank you, Westside, for this $4,700. We're gonna add another $300, and today, We'll present $5,000 to the Imagine More campaign on behalf of my birthday. So let's see if I can get that. Thank you for your able leadership. Thank you for what Imagine More means. Thank you for the boundless possibilities. Westside, thank you for loving me in such a way that you uh, honor my desire to be a blessing. Uh, and, and the next time y'all get ready for me to talk, don't have Jude do anything. Jude has run me all over this building. I'm completely out of breath with that kind of praise. Thank you all so much. I love you. Thank you for your service. Love you, Westside. Thank you so much. God's blessings upon you. And thank you so much, Pastor. On behalf of Imagine More Westside family, you showed up, you showed out. And Pastor, the giving is still going. No. So we will give a final count for you for next Sunday. All right, all right? then. All right, then. Bless you. Bless you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, man, what a great day to be in worship. What an exciting time to be in worship. I want to say thank you for your kindness. You make getting old fun. Amen. Amen. Somebody asked me uh, the other day, how old am I? I said, it depends on where I am. Whatever age they start giving discounts, I'm that age. Amen. And I praise God for your presence. I want to say a special thank you. Uh, to uh, Sister Deborah for what she did. Deborah's just amazing. Now, Deborah says it's hard on me not being able to hug. It's hard on her not to be able to decorate the whole church. And uh, if you've ever seen the way Deborah does it, streams are flying down, doves are going across, fireworks are going out. She does it first class, and I thank you. Even from the time when I was serving as your interim, she made us feel special and love she shares with both me and with Brenda, and I celebrate her for that. I want to say thank you to Dr. Bradley and to Jude. I know behind the scenes you all have been working to uh, just the officers and members of our church, our staff, thank you so much. I'm really excited today that my baby sister flew in uh, from Virginia and my niece to be with me to celebrate my birthday, um, to face the challenges of travel in this time of COVID just to come and to say I love you. She came in and surprised me and uh, they almost got surprised, amen. That's why the Bible says you got to guard your tongue. They were tapered, and uh, I came this close to saying something Paul didn't write, amen. But I switched real quick, ooh, Jesus, thank you. 
and uh, she flew down from Virginia to make the day special. What a great day of worship we've already had. Thank you, Dr. Bradley, for that worship, and Jew for that worship. Now we're brought up to the period of giving. What a joy it is uh, that you have been consistent and faithful in your giving. Now you and you alone know how you've treated God with your gifts. Let me say, on behalf of the Westside Church, let's be clear. Westside is a congregation of tithers, and we are a tithing congregation. Not only do we ask our members to give 10%, but we give 10% of all that we take in, we give it away in missions. It does not go here. We have consistently undergirded churches during this time of COVID. We have been a blessing to churches around this country. And I want to say thank you because of your gifts. Now, you've got to answer to God for how you treat what God gives to you. Uh, I tell people all the time, and uh, I say this particularly to leaders, that, that I can't control what you give, but I can control whether or not you lead because you can't sit high and give low. Talk the other night. If this ministry is a blessing to you, if you are serious about your church, and you know the needs that we have, then you're serious about your gifts. You can tell who loves the Lord by how they treat him with their gifts. And I want to invite you to give. You can give on our website. You're able to text to give, WBC Church to 77977. You're able to give through our app that's available at both Google and Apple Store online. And you're able to mail your checks to 900 Bel Air Boulevard here in Louisville, Texas, 75067. I encourage you to continue to join us. Today we continue to give for the pastor's birthday that will go to the Imagine More and we'll have a final tally. So when you're getting ready to give and they ask you, the drop box will come down and you can give in pastor's birthday and that will go to Imagine More. Thank you for being such an amazing church, Westside, because you could have given everything to just Imagine More and you thought enough of me to love me to give a gift to me. And I don't take that lightly. I don't take that like, I've been receiving your cards and your letters of encouragement. Thank you so much. Let me just pray now as we prepare to give, as you're giving even now. Lord, bless our hearts. Direct us in all that we give, that it's done to the glory and honor of your kingdom. Breathe on our gifts, because we know when they're placed in your hand, you can do so much more with them. So have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm ready to shout again. I don't know what they're going to do, but I know it's going to be good. Amen. Every time you get a chance, you ought to give God praise. Brother, Minister Jude, I'm going to use you again. Come on. <laughs> Lord, let me. Come on, put your hands together at home. You ought to give God praise. 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 Every time. Every time you get a chance. You ought to give God praise. 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 Every time. You ought to give God praise. Well, you ought to, you ought to clap your hands. 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 Every time. Every time you get a chance, you ought to give God praise. Oh, you ought to lift your voice. You ought to lift your voice. Come on and lift your voice. You ought to lift To give God praise, you ought to give God praise every time. Every time you get a chance, you ought to give God praise. Well, He's worthy, He's worthy, yes. He's worthy to be praised. Lift Him up, lift Him up, and let His name every time. Time you get a chance, you ought to give 
hands, everybody. Praise him. You ought to praise him. 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 Praise him. He is worthy. Praise him. He's been good. Ought to praise him. He's been kind. Praise him. He's been good. You ought to praise him. Praise him. You ought to. You ought to praise him. Ought to praise him. He's been good. He's been kind. Ought to praise. You ought to praise. Praise him. You ought to praise him. Praise him. You ought to praise him. Clap your hands. You ought to praise. Lift your voice. You ought to praise. Praise him. You ought to praise. Praise him. You ought to praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. Every time Every time You ought to give God praise Come on, clap your hands, everybody He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy Praise him you ought, you ought to praise. Praise him. Praise you, ought to praise. you ought to praise. From the rising of the sun to, to the setting of the same. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. Every time you get up there. Every time. Every time you get up there. Every time. Every time you get up there. You get a chance. You ought to give God. You ought to give God the Again, let me thank you for joining us today in our worship experience. As a part of my birthday gift, I wanted you to experience worship with us as a church family. I wanted to worship with our church. I've been teaching on Wednesday night a series from Mark 5, and so we looked for a worship service that included Mark 5, and you're going to be blessed. I'm so excited to have a church that loves the Lord and our worship is one that shows that love through. Please join us now as God moves us from madness to ministry. But when I see where I am and I remember where I've been, God has been so faithful. God has been so faithful. He has been so faithful and I want to thank you. It is such a joy to come and to preach where people left home with worshiping on their mind. It's a joy, uh, and I thank God for that. I'm going to try to get through this and try to finish it, but I, I intend to holler. Amen. Amen. I, 
I left home with shouting on my mind. Look with me in Mark the fifth chapter, Mark the fifth chapter. Grateful for the presence of some friends here today, Dr. Cotton, Katrina, so good to see you both. Katrina's mother has come and has sang for us several times. We just love to have corners here anytime. I want to read verses 1 through 5, verse 15, and then verse 19. They came to the other side of the sea, to the region of the Gerasenes. As soon as he got out of the boat, a man with an unclean spirit came out of the tombs and met him. He lived in the tombs, and no one was able to restrain him anymore, not even with the chain, because he often had been bound with shackles and chain, but he had torn the chains apart and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Verse 15 says, they came to Jesus and saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting there, dressed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Verse 19 says, Jesus did not let him go, but told him, go home to your own people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. The grass withers, the flowers thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk about from madness to mercy. From madness to mercy. I, 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 I like the fact that our God meets this man in this particular dilemma. He meets this man, he comes, and the Bible says Jesus gets off a boat. In certain scriptures, you will find that it was in Gadara. Here it says in the Gezerines, Jesus meets this man who is living in a tomb. And this man who finds himself living in the cemetery, who finds himself ostracized by society, who finds himself separated is an example of us of really the way all of us are in sin. If we are honest with ourselves, there is some madness in all of our lives. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus will meet you exactly where you are and he will take you to where he wants you to go. I didn't know better, I think I was preaching already. This text says to us, it's interesting to me that when we see this young man, first of all, he is defined as a menace. He, he is a menace to society. How, how do you know? Look at what has happened to this man. As a matter of fact, he has quite a few similarities with what our culture tells us about the African-American male. Look, look at what the text says about him. This young man is among the tombs. We know he has a family, but he has left his family. He's abandoned his family responsibilities. Not only has he abandoned his family, but we find that he has had to face incarceration because he has been shackled by chains. They used to tie him up, but they can't tie him up anymore. This man has been involved in a abuse, self-abuse, because he is cutting himself with stones. This man has a real sense of an identity crisis because when he is asked who he is, he doesn't say who he is. He says who possesses him, my name is Legion. But I've come to suggest that when we look at this young man who doesn't know who he is, absent from his family, facing incarceration and abuse, I want to suggest that his dilemma is really threefold. First of all, this man is here because of some choices he made himself. I'm not making it up. You can follow with me in the text. The text says he lives in the cemetery. Now, nobody with good sense intentionally lives in the cemetery. 
And he's not forced to live there because if you read the text, the text says he is on, at night he is roaming on the mountains and then he's in the cemetery. So he's not forced to live down. He has made a choice to not live in high places but to live in low places. And I need to suggest to somebody in here, I'm preaching already, you know what? I want to suggest to somebody in here that life will let you make choices but it'll take consequences out of your hand. I, I don't know who I'm talking to and, and somebody in here, you're like me when you told your parents, I'm grown, I can do what I want to do. And the truth of the matter is you are big enough to make any choice you want, but life has a way of making you live with the consequences of your choices. And he chose to live in low places. Can I tell you there's a high cost to low living. When you decide to live low, it costs you high. Preach, Delvin Atchison, I am. But let me suggest to you, it's not just because of itself, but it's because of society. The description of this man is given that he lives among the tombs. Let me tell you something about society. This is where I was trying to go, y'all. That society will try to define you. They will tell you who it is they think you ought to be. So that what they say about the African American male isn't always true. But society will try to tell you that you've got a better chance of going to the state pen than you do of going to Penn State. Because society will try to define you. And when society cannot define you, they'll try to confine you. They'll say, if you won't act the way we want you to act, they'll try to define you, and then they'll try to refine you. They will try to say, if you're not going to act this way, maybe you'll act this way. And from refinement, from their defining, they'll try to confine you. You've got to be careful, but you ought to know who you are. Ah, oh, y'all going to make me preach. You, you got to be careful because if you allow folk to tell you who you are, then they tell you how you're supposed to act. And one of the reasons we don't know how to act is because we don't know who we really are. Whenever you let other folk tell you who you are, they'll try to tell you you can act. And God knows I love sports. I'm going to be at somebody's house today eating y'all's food and watching the Super Bowl. But society will tell us that the only thing we're good at is entertainment and sports. And we are good at that. I make no doubt. But if you let society define you, then they'll convince you that's all you're good at. And they won't let you know that you're also good at education. Like a Booker T. Washington at Tuskegee and a Mary McLeod Bethune and a Ben Mays at Morehouse. Society will tell you that you can't be good at politics like a Shirley Chisholm or an Edward Brooks or a Barack Obama. They'll, they'll tell you that you can't be good at science like a Daniel Hale Williams or a Charles Drew or a George Washington Carver. They'll tell you you can't be good at religion like a Richard Allen and Absalom Jones or a Gardner tell you. They'll tell you, I wish I had somebody that you can't be good in community involvement and activity like a Frederick Douglass. Don't let other folk define you. You ought to know who you are. See, because the most dangerous person in the world is somebody who has a sense of identity. Society tried to define him, they tried to refine him, and they tried to confine him, but not just because of it's self-choice is society, but because of Satan. Listen, the devil is real. Don't let somebody tell you he's some figment of the imagination. Don't let somebody tell you that we are intellectually evolved enough that we no longer, no, you can believe that if you want to. If sin ain't real, at least the consequences of sin is real. All you got to do is look around and you see the consequences. And I need to tell you something. The Bible says he was demon possessed. And the reality is that whenever we deal with the devil, we always go further than we intended. Yeah, see, because the devil has been a, a professional since Genesis. We still amateurs. Whenever you deal with sin, you go farther than you intended to go. You stay longer than you intended to stay, and it's going to cost you more than you meant to pay. I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to help me testify in here. I, I know you got on your church clothes, but I, I need some folk in here to help me testify that sin is like chocolate-covered Alpo. It tastes good when you bite into it, but that aftertaste will get you every time. I, I can't get an amen. I ought to get an ouch for coming down your road. Amen. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality is that, 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 that you ought to know. And, 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 and society who has robbed him of his identity, Satan shows us that his ultimate job is to destroy whatever God's creation is. Satan sought to destroy this man. As a matter of fact, when the demons come out of him and go into the devil, when they go into the pigs and the pigs destroy themselves, the folk didn't get mad when Jesus helped the man. They got mad when Jesus messed with the business. You know, let me, let me, watch, watch. Let me, let me tell you something about society. Society was, was comfortable with this man staying where he was relegated. They told Jesus, don't go, he crazy, don't go fool with him, leave him out there. In verse 15, the man is seated, clothed in his right mind, and the Bible says they were so afraid. People are afraid of somebody who knows who they are. Oh, I should have got a shout right there. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shout all by myself. What made them so nervous about Jesus is that Jesus spent his whole life not allowing other folk to define who he was. When, when he was 12, his mom and daddy came back and he said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? When he did his first miracle, his mother said, you need to do this. He said, it's not my time yet. I'm not going to let anybody else define me. Jesus is dying on a cross. He is condemned. And, uh, as he is being condemned, his, his accuser said to them, are you the Christ? Even John said, should we look for another? His accuser said to him, are, are, are you really the son of God? He said, thou sayest, y'all, when Jesus is dying on a cross, watch this. They said to him, if you really are the Christ, come down. Don't miss this. He had come all the way from eternity and time through 42 generations. And they say, if you come down three more feet, you can prove to us who you are. You got to know who you are and don't let other folk tell you who you are. I know who I am. I, I, I'm a child of the king. I, I have been defined not by my culture, but by my Christ. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them. Well, he is defined as a menace, but he is uh, delivered by the master. It's in the text. I'm not making up. Here's what I wanted to shout about y'all. Jesus gets out of the boat and goes to where the man is. Here is a shout. You've been looking for one. Jesus is able to reach us where we are. In the months to come, we're going to make a major emphasis on evangelism because one of the things that we've gotten wrong is we keep telling people, come and see. Jesus tells us to go and tell. And the good news about the gospel is wherever you are, you're in the right place to have a confrontation with Jesus. Wherever you are in life, that's exactly what Jesus wants you to be. Because Jesus doesn't wait for the man to come to the chapel. He goes to meet him in the cemetery. I don't need everybody, but I need about seven people here to say that when the Lord met you, it wasn't at the youth Bible study. I need some folk who that the Lord met up in the club. I need some folk who the Lord met when you were just about ready to give up on life. I, I, I need some folk who God met in some low places when everybody else had ridden you off. But Jesus Jesus came right to where you were. I, I need some folk who can say the Lord met me with a crack pipe in my hand. I need some folk in here who said I was doing something I ought not be. But that night I had a confrontation with Jesus and he reached I don't care how low you are. If you're on the bottom, Jesus will stoop down and scoop you up. But he just doesn't reach us where we are. He rescues us from what we are. Yeah, 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 I, I, was, I, was, I was on my way. I was messed up. But I met Jesus. And I like this. The Bible says that when he, when he meets this man, he, Jesus has a confrontation with the devil. And it's, it's shouting time, y'all. Jesus has this confrontation. He asks this man who he is. The man doesn't know who he is. As a matter of fact, he can't speak for himself. He says, our name is Legion, for we are many. And the devil does this ploy where he says, Jesus, I adjure you. If you read that text, it says, Jesus, son of God, son of the most high. Please don't torment us. Watch this, y'all. Don't, don't miss this. When you read, it was not the devil giving praise to God. 
No, there was an ancient belief that said if you name someone, you could control them. That's why, that, that's why that African proverb said, it's not what you call me that's important, it's what I answer to. Teach this morning, Devin. I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. And so he, here, here the devil is saying to him, he's trying to control Jesus, but, but he knows. And so he has to get permission. Y'all, you've been waiting to shout. Somebody in here think that the devil and God got the same power. He doesn't. God has all power. The devil asks God for permission to go into the animals because the Bible says this. The reason he did that is to say, leave us alone, is because before the devil called Jesus' name, Jesus had already called them out of the man. He had summons. They knew they had to go. And I need about five people in here who will help me testify that when Jesus says you got to move, the devil got to move. Y'all, no, no, no. That was a hollow spot. You, you, you should have scared who was ever sitting right by you. Ever sitting, you should have scared because you should have hollered right there that when God says to the devil, you got to move, I'm, I'm talking to somebody who's been living with some stuff you ain't got to put up with anymore. You need to tell him you got to move when God says move. He rescued him from what he was. He made him go into the pigs. And I like, I, I like what the old preachers where I'm from used to say, that the pigs would rather die than not give God glory. They, they, rather than serve the devils, the pigs decided to commit suicide. They killed themselves. Jesus reaches us where we are. He rescues us from what we are, but he redefines who we are. Let me tell you why I wanted to shout about Jesus delivering this man. Where I'm from in the country, you'd ask people how they doing, they were blessed because they were clothed in their right mind. That's what they say, we're clothed in our right mind. But the text says that the man was clothed. The man had been undressed. Don't miss this. He had been undressed, he had been insane, and people were more afraid of him being somebody clothed and with composure. than they were with him acting crazy. I ain't after nobody, but you got to be careful who you give your mind, give a piece of your mind to. Because you only got, I ain't after nobody, I ain't nobody, I'm not, and I don't, I don't troll your Facebook, so I ain't going to talk your business. But when, when, there are some folk who love to brag about giving people a piece of their mind. You know, you know, they're going to give them a piece of their mind, they're going to say, well, I gave them a, listen, you only got so many pieces. They were more afraid of somebody who was clothed and incomposed. You know what's interesting to me? Here's what's interesting to me. The man hasn't gone home yet. I was wondering where he got the clothes from. And I'm the only one that, that that shot. Here he is. He lives in a cemetery. Here he is. He has lost his mind living in a cemetery. Jesus is going to send him back home in verse 19 to show him what he's done. So the, the, the assertion in the text is that he hadn't been home. But now we see a man who is crazy and he's sitting clothed in his right mind. Can I tell you whatever you need? I'm glad Jesus is sufficient for it. I don't know where he got him from, but I know he was with the right person to get him to him. Let me tell you why I like Mark 5. Let me tell you why I like the book of Mark. It's because because Mark 5 is right in the middle of us being able to brag on the kind of Jesus we got. In Mark 4, Jesus got on a boat with his disciples. When he got on the boat, he got on a pillow and went to sleep because he was tired. He is asleep in the back of the boat. They wake him up and Jesus fussed at the wind. And in the message, the Greek says that Jesus, that the wind ran out of breath. Jesus knocked the breath out of the wind, made it be quiet. Jesus made the sea behave. They wake him up. He gets out of the boat. He's still tired. He hadn't had a chance to sleep. A madman comes to him. The word legions carried with it. Thousands of demons. A tired Jesus can handle thousands of devils. He tells them, come out the man and leave him alone. And, and later on in verse 5, he's going to be touched by a woman with an issue of blood. He's going to heal the woman that touched him and he's going to heal a little girl who had died at 12. All I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying not to shout here, but Jesus can handle your storm 
Jesus can handle your sin. Jesus can handle your sickness. If you can have it, Jesus can handle it. I need some Jesus cheerleaders up in here who can say if you can get it, Jesus can take care of it. I don't care. Whatever you need, you can find it in Jesus. I'm out of here, y'all, when I give you this last one. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. He's described, here he is described as a menace. He's, he's been defined in this text as a menace. He is delivered by the master, but he's detoured into a ministry. When Jesus met this man in his madness and gave him mercy, Jesus then gives him a ministry. Now listen, here's, here's strange to me, that the Jesus who reaches us where we are, who uh, rescues us from what we are, who redefines who we are, now redirects where we're going. Yes, yes. Who wouldn't want to do like this man? This man says to Jesus, Jesus, I want to run with you. Jesus, I'm going to be your boy. I'm going I'm, I'm to be with you. And Jesus says, I don't need you to go with me. I'm going to be where I am. What I need you to do is I need you to go back to the folk who knew you back when you used yeah, okay, I'm going to be country. Jesus said, I need the folk who used to know you back when you used to care on. And, and you go back and let them see the difference that meeting Jesus has made in your life. He, he says, I want you to go back. And, and listen, you don't have to put on a big old rhinestone Jesus pin. You, you don't have to every time somebody asks you a question. You know, some folk, you can't play with it all. It, they, they, they are just, y'all y'all ain't going to be real. They are just, you know folk who are always saved, just always, they're so holy they make you tired. You can't joke with them because they jump, oh my God, but Lord, no, no, no. Jesus says you don't have to do all that. You don't have to have a Bible so big you got to carry a wagon to carry it. He says, here's what you do. You let them see you. They know how you were. Let them see how you are. And what Jesus says to him is, I'm going to make such a change in your life that the folk who knew you when are going to know you now. And Jesus says, I know what you want to do, but I've got something else for you to do. And that looks like a good place for me to get off. I'm, I'm going to get, because I need to tell you that the Lord loves you, but, but he has some better plans than the plans you have for your life. Can I just testify? I've been saving myself. When I was a boy, I wanted to be a lawyer. I tell people I, every day, even now, I watch Perry Mason. When I grew up, I wanted to be like Perry Mason. We, we, we didn't have Johnny Cochran. Well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be like Perry Mason. I was going to be a lawyer from grade five. Everything I did, all my classes were geared towards government. But when I had a confrontation with Jesus, I met a man in the cemetery of my own life. And he changed where I was going. His name was Jesus. He said, I don't want you to defend the law. I want you to be a defender of the Lord. So I have become the Lord's attorney. When you hear me preach, I'm presenting a case to the jury of the congregation. I'm arguing on the Lord's behalf. And I want to tell you that he has changed where I'm going. I don't need everybody, but I need about seven people in here to testify that God can redirect your life. He can change where you're going. I, I've been saving my testimony. Dr. Bradley was telling you how West Side, how you had been through, and everybody had written you off. Can I give you my testimony? Y'all, I thought I was a major baller. I was living life like I wanted. I, I said, I'm through with the local church. I got it going on. I don't want to go back and be in any more fights. But God said, let me show you. You ain't been loved like you can be loved. God had a group from your church to come visit me. I'm thinking I'm going to be in a room, but God had some plans the whole time. When I came here, y'all, I was telling other young cats that when they get ready to call, holler at your boy. I'm going to recommend you to him. But God said, Delvin, I don't care about your plans. And the longer I was here, the more God started turning my heart. The more God let some folk love on me. And let me show you what happens. When God got something for you, the devil in hell can't stop you. I know that not everybody wanted me at Westside. I know there were some folk who didn't like me. I'm good with that. It's some folk I don't like. But I didn't come here to be liked. I came here because God said it. And God worked it out. 
I didn't have to fight anybody. I didn't have to do any underhanded tricks. All I had to do was be still. And God fought my battles. And I let me tell you, when God is in it, you don't get a majority. You get a mandate. God fought my battle. Can I get somebody to shout with me? Can I get somebody to shout with me? Somebody said I needed 75. God said that ain't nothing for me. I'm going to give you almost 100. And I'm going to leave the almost to keep you prayerful. When God fights for you, you can be still. Oh, yeah. This family talk now. Listen, listen, I love everybody. I, I do, I love you all. I know some folk got some other choices, but listen, I got so many on my side, I can't see who's against me. I don't need everybody, but I need about 30 people up in here who can say, Pastor, I saw God do it. And I'm on my way to an invitation, but I'm going to tell you this, you be careful of the things you say about me. I'm an heir of salvation. Can't you see? God takes care of his children. Can I get about 70 people to say God knows how to take care of you? Won't he work it out? The good news is that God can meet you where you are. He'll take you where he wants you to go. And I'm finna shout on this one, y'all. I'm so glad that God is not through blessing. Anybody here know? See, cause what the world doesn't understand, we got this from church, what the world doesn't understand is every time they brag about their best, they look behind them. Come, come on. That's why they talk about the good old days. That's why you'll get an a, a egomaniacal lunatic to talk about making America what it was. But you know what the church got? That, that's why. That's why when they play Golden Oldies at the family reunion, you know your uncle. Because their best is behind them. But y'all, you know what the church's promise is? And it's one for Westside. I'm declaring it over you right now that our best days are before us. The Bible says, I had not seen, ear had not heard, it's not even entered into our heart the good things God has to restore for us. The Bible says, the Bible tells us it does not yet. I need somebody up in here who can say, Westside, our best days are still before us that the west side is the best side and God's going to do exceeding abundantly. We pray that you have been blessed by uh, the word that went forth about how a madman's life was changed and he went back home to be with his family. I want to give you an invitation to come and to be a part of our church family. You're able to join online. We invite you to go to wbcchurch.org and join. We also invite you to just drop us an email. As I watch uh, during our parties, I watch parties and go back. I see names that repeat over and over again. Just let us know that you're watching. We invite you to have parties, share parties, watch parties where you're able to share with your friends. You can call up to the church. Jesus has been waiting on an invitation to come into your life. He'll meet you where you are, and he'll change where you're going. Dr. Bradley is going to bless us with a song now as you contemplate the decision you make for Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and 
and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender you've been blessed and you've had a challenge from God to allow him to convert your madness to a merciful ministry. Now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon each of you and give you peace. Go my family and the Lord be with you. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. I love you Westside. Be blessed. Welcome to Westside Baptist Church 18th Annual Purity Dinner. And thank you to Rosalind Spencer and Pastor Dolphin Atchison and have a blessed time. He is the son of Rachel Potlock and Demetrius Early. Lord, I, Noah Early, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understand that my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Mom, your response? No, your friends, family, and I support you with your purity vows, for you have committed to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. We love you and we will support you. Present the ring. Nor before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. Thank you, young man. It's going to be Jalen Holmes, the son of Charles Jr. and Danae Holmes. Lord, I, Jalen Holmes, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual immor immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understand that my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit who has given to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely, honest, right in your sight, O oh Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Our response? Sure. We expect Jalen to keep this vow for the rest of his life. That's what <laughs> I will pray for. <laughs> Amen. Brother Holmes, you have a response? Yeah, we're so proud of Jalen. And we know that Jalen will be committed to his vows. And... Uh, like the other two boys that have gone, his brothers have gone before him. We're proud of him. All right, present the ring. Jayla, today before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. Thank you, young man. My body, I vow to abstain from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance, for I understand that my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to me, who has been given to help and keep me. I will think on what is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Amen. Response. 
Austin, we're very proud of the young man that you are and all the gifts and the love that you show toward other people. We will, we promise and we vow to continue to support you and raise you in the instruction and discipline of the Lord and support you in any way that we can as you live out this vow made today before the Lord. We love you. Present the ring. Austin, today before the Lord and your family, you have made this vow. Thank you, young man. Helen Jackson, son of Callie Lytle. Lord, I, Helen Jackson, commit my vow. I mean, commit my body to a vow to abstain from sex immorality until I'm married. I also committed to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understood that my body is your temple. I will I house the Holy Spirit who has been who has given who has been given to help and keep me. I would think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O oh Lord. Before God and my family, I'll I'll commit this vow. Amen. Respond. Yes, I accept and I'm very much proud of my son. And I love you. Amen. Present the ring. Jalen, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. Introduce you properly, the daughter of Oza and Shamika Jones. Oza. And you may commit your vow. Lord, I, Majesty Jones, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and un any un illegal substance. For I understand my body is your temple and I house the Holy Spirit, who has been given to me to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely and honest and right. In your sight, O Lord, before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response? Majesty, we are proud of you. We know God has great things in store for you, and uh, we will help you in this vow and walk in the ways that the Lord has called and uh, destined you to. We're proud of you. Present the ring. Des Majesty, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. We are very proud of you. Lord, I, Jalea Kennard, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual morality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understand my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to help and keep me. For I, I think on whatever is lovely, honest, and in your sight, O Lord. Before Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response? I am very proud of you, Julia, and that's going to be going on for the rest of your life. Present the ring. Julia, before the Lord and your family, you have committed your vow. Thank you, young lady. You may present your vow. Lord, I, Clayton Major, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance, for I understand that my body is your temple, and I have the Holy, Holy Spirit who has been given to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response? Clayton, me, your mother, sister, and family love you and will support you in keeping this vow. So we're very proud of you and very proud for you making this choice. Present the ring. Clayton, before the Lord and your family, you have made your, your vow. Very proud of you.
Yeah. George and Keisha McKnight. Clayton, K Kate, you may say your vow. Lord, I can't ignite, commit my body to you. I, uh, I vow to abstain from any sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from any drunkenness or illegal substances, for my body is your temple. Um, and, and I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to house and keep me. I also will think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response? Uh, well, you know, you guys know I'm certainly proud of Cade and, and everything he does. And, um, you know, we always talk about using his powers for good and his leadership and his uh, ability to affect people. So um, I'm so glad he's taking this step and uh, to continue to be a leader. Um, I also want to say to all the young men out there that, that you know, that I coach and have come through Camp Lebanon, it's great to see you guys out here, you know, still holding up their bloodstained banner and doing the right thing. So all you guys keep, keep pushing. Uh, we love Kay, you know, and we'll continue to support him, you know, in anything he does. Amen. Present the rain. Kay, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. Very proud of you. Norris, <laughs> son of Herbie Evelyn <laughs> Norris. <laughs> Good afternoon. Lord, I, Kingston Norris, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from any sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from any drunkenness and any illegal substance, for I understand that my body is your temple. And I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I, I commit this vow. Response? Kingston, your family, your friends, and I are very, very proud of you and the young man you're becoming. We will continue to support you in every way, and I will continue to keep you in the admonition of the Lord. Continue doing God's good work. Present the ring. Kingston, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Of Donna and Diana Robertson. Desiree, you may present your vow. Lord, I, Desiree Robertson, commit my body to you. I vow to stay away from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to stay away from drunkenness and any illegal substance, for I know that my body is your temple and I house the Holy Spirit who has been assigned to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely honest and right in your view, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response? Desiree, you are a smart, talented, and caring young lady. As your parents, we will always support you in everything, bad or good. So we, we hope that you can keep this commitment until you are 35. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Present the ring. Desiree, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. We're very proud of you. Of Brandy Sanders. Kaden, you may present your vow. I, Kaden Sanders, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from any sexual immorality until I am married. I vow to repent from any sexual sin or drunkenness and to stay obedient to you, Lord. I will not be tempted by the influence of the world, but will follow the path that you have for me. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Amen. Response? Kaden, I am so proud of you, and I'm proud to be your mom. And I am so thankful that you're choosing and committing to further your relationship with Christ. I vow that we will give you the support and the encouragement that you need on this journey. And I love you very much. Present the ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Played it, Kaden, before the Lord and your family. 
you have made your vow. Very proud of you. Thank you. He is the son of Lawrence and Deidre Thomas. Benjamin, you may present your vow. Good evening. Lord, I, Benjamin Thomas, commit my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understand that my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit who has been given to help and keep me. I'll dig on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight, O Lord. Before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response. Benjamin, I am very proud to be your dad, and I support you in everything that you're going to endure. Um, we want you to go um, to accomplish the five, high school diploma, then college degree, then a good job, then a house, and then a wife. We support you 100%, son. I love you. You are an awesome kid. And have fun on that. Present the ring. Benjamin, before the Lord and your family, you have made your vow. Very proud of you. Next, we have of Sonny and Judith Udova. Um, Lord, I, Augusta Udova, commit to my body to you. I vow to abstain from sexual immorality until I am married. I also commit to abstain from drunkenness and any illegal substance. For I understand that my body is your temple, and I house the Holy Spirit, who has been given to help and keep me. I will think on whatever is lovely, honest, and right in your sight. O oh Lord, before, oh, bef oh Lord, before the Lord and my family, I commit this vow. Response. Yeah, Augusta. Oh, uh, my my wife is not available for this ceremony, That's but awesome. we love we love you so much, and uh, we support you in whatever you decide to do. And uh, we know you are a very brave and uh, smart kid. So we'll be there for you. Thank you very much. You may present the ring. We have no ring. <laughs> you, you will have one. We just want you to go through the motion. Okay. Oh, there you go. You're going to pick it up this week. <laughs> Amen. And before the Lord, Augusta, before the Lord and your family, you have committed your vow. We're very proud of you. Hey. Great job! Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. We are so proud of you, man. I am, I am proud of them, and I am proud of you guys. You guys were so quiet. Oh my goodness! I need y'all to all come to Children's Church. It does not work like that on Children's Church. <laughs> and look, and nobody was writing on the board. So, hey, man. <laughs> We want to all bow our heads just as we cover them in a prayer. Okay. We're gonna have I'm gonna cover them in a very quick prayer, and then we're gonna have Pastor give us a, a closing remarks and closing prayer. All right, you guys have done outstanding. Let's just um, pray right quick. Father God, thank you so much for all those that participated. God, thank you for your word in Philippians that said you started this work and you're going to complete this work. And God, thank you for placing in them the power to keep them, which is the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for blessing their going out and their coming in. Thank you for the surrounding of goodness and mercy, which will follow them all the days of their lives. And God, thank you for embedding in their hearts that they can be victorious. They are victorious in you and that they are more than conquerors. Thank you so much, Lord. I pray now that you will just blanket and cover their minds, body, and soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Reverend Spencer, thank you for all that you've uh, done uh, today uh, as it relates to preaching for us this morning, that word of challenge to these young people, and uh, for guiding us to this program. Hello, everybody. Hello. It is such a joy to see you. Mrs. Ashton joins me. I... Uh, First program I think that we attended uh, as as interim was this purity uh, event, and, and for that we are so grateful. We're grateful to have such exciting young people. Thank you, uh, Whitney, for your work, and Nikki for your work in helping to get this together. It was such a joy to watch our uh, gifted young people lead us in that in the sharing of the parable of the uh, 
of the Good Samaritan. And then today to have you commit your bodies to the Lord. God wants your hearts, but he wants your bodies as well. So that when you give them to him, whatever we give to God, he always uses it for his glory. And when he gives it back to us, it's better than when we gave it to him. I'm so excited. And as pastor of Westside Baptist Church, our commitment is to that we stand with you in your commitment to purity. We commit to supporting you, to loving you, to encouraging you, and uh, being there for you. Uh, thank you for making today a very special day. Uh, Reverend Rosner, is there anything else that will catch our attention? No, no, we're ready for closing prayer. Let's pray. And everybody make sure your camera's on so I can see you before I leave. There you go. Get to see how y'all decorated your house, who cleaned up and all that. <laughs> I want to thank the Robinsons who are our deacon liaisons for uh, just, just being in their support and leading, uh, helping to lead uh, this program. Thank you. That's in Daron. Appreciate you. Let's pray. God, how we love you, how we bless you. Thank you for such wonderful gifts and for being stewards of these young hearts, these young minds, these young bodies. We pray that as a church family, we would lead them in a proper direction. And we pray for your guidance, that you would put your hedge of protection around these young lives, directing and guiding them in the choices that they might make. And Lord, we pray that whenever they're tempted to settle, they would always remember that they are royal, that we are peculiar, we are unique, and we've been called to greater. Help them to imagine more. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon each of you and give you peace. Amen. This isn't about today. It's about the next 10 years. But this is something you can do today. You can make a difference today. By completing the 2020 census. The census impacts hospitals, schools, public transportation, and most importantly, our representation in government. It gives us an opportunity to be heard. It's easy. It's only 10 questions. So do your part. Go to 2020census.gov and complete the census today. What are you waiting for? again for joining us for Sunday morning worship service and please join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Bible study on YouTube, Facebook, the WBC mobile app and WBCchurch.org. Have a blessed and safe week and we will see you Wednesday night.